Hey, it's Paolo from Trivium. We are on the Dead Men and Dragons tour right now with Heaven Shall Burn and Malevolence. It's killer. See you later. When are we coming back to Bloodstock? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's really going to have to just be with timing of things lining up. Um, obviously, now that festivals and stuff are back, I know last year was a crazy one for festivals. It was like every band was on every single festival. Um, I know we're going to be back next August to Europe and we're doing some festivals and potentially some UK stuff uh, that we're kind of working out now. But for Bloodstock, I don't know, just whenever the, the stars align, you know, we'll definitely be back if they want us. Um, I mean, I think just that as we've kind of gone on, I, I mean, obviously, I think we're all better players than we've ever been and Alex is such a phenomenal drummer and he's brought a lot to our band like in the live aspect i think you know we've never been better for sure uh i i mean i guess that that's more objective to me than like music being like more subjective you know what's our best records or whatever but i do think we're making some of our strongest music and i think the last three records are probably our most consistently back-to-back -back strongest records we've done um and it's a combination of just getting better as players, but not giving up on wanting to like push ourselves musically, wanting to be better, wanting to be better live and on the record. And if you really just kind of have that mindset and just push forward with that, I mean, I, in theory, I think you should get better over time. And there's so many bands in metal that I feel like have gone and gotten better somehow. And I'm like, if they can do it, we have to do it. We can't like be slack now. We're, we're too far into this to just be kind of coasting. You know, I think it's just always uh, kind of figuring out new things to kind of throw into the, the blend of what we do and to kind of give the sound that we've created sort of our natural sound of the ways we're writing riffs, new flavors, I guess you could say. Um, I guess the hardest part is like now when you get to like 10 albums in, it's like, okay, you, you've kind of thrown everything in the kitchen sink at these records. Like, what do you do for the next? And, so maybe this this will be, I think the the next, uh, you know, if we get to 10 more records, they're, they're going to be the hardest ones to make because it's like we've done so much already that you have to really live up to what you've done and create something fresh. And, and you're, you're balancing everything of like people expecting certain things, but also people, you know, wanting to be surprised as well and having it be a good surprise and not a bad surprise for a record. So those are... Gonna, they're going to be hard ones. I know we got a lot of work cut out for us for whatever we do next. Sometimes it's like the opposite. Sometimes I'm like, is it too much? Like, yeah, is it like, do we get, do we all get better? And we just kind of like, what our perception of like, what is technical get like so far beyond what like people are expecting from us. Um, you know, I do think people like the kind of proggy and technical fast heavy stuff from us. Um, but again, it's like that sort of thing. It's like as your actual skill gets better, it's like you're able to do more. And it's like, you know, there's always that risk of like you go a little too far one direction or the other. I think we've been very good. Like when we write, if it feels like we're getting a little off the rails with something, like it's okay, this is just sounding like death metal now. It's like, that's not what we are. We're not a death metal band, but we incorporate death metal aspects into some stuff we do. And it's always trying to figure out, like, where is that line? And, you know, just because you do it doesn't mean it's going to make the song or your sound better. Maybe it'll just kind of change it too much. So, um, again, it's just one of those things of, like, subjective uh, opinions. But um, I like to always think you, it's good to go into an album with, like, some sort of guardrails or rules you kind of set out of, like, where you're going to go, what you're not going to do. Um, Sometimes having that actually helps, I think, write a little bit more concise and better what you're trying to do. So it's a very, it's a very conscious decision. Yeah, I think, I think you should kind of be a little bit. Um, I mean, the initial ideas are usually more spur of the moment, um, the happy accidents and stuff like that. But I do think for us, like having a little framework helps quite a bit. I don't like, I don't like when we've gone in too loose to a uh, pre-production or recording session because. I think we're just better when we're just like really uh, well rehearsed and we've taken those ideas that we come in with that are sort of more, you know, the spur of the moment stuff or the, hey, here's this cool riff, but then we shape it into something and we're like, 
we're really confident when we hit record on for the real thing. We've never been pushed to do any of that stuff. We were usually ahead of everyone with that. Um, the Twitch thing was sort of like this kind of happy accident of, I like literally it was like, I forget what tour it was, but I remember what state we were in. We were in North Dakota and it was like, I think Matt was doing like some YouTube covers or something and I was, I read an article about Twitch and I was like, hey, have you heard of this thing? It's like a live stream. You just, you know, it's not like you pre-record it and upload it. It's just like, do it in real time and that was kind of how it started and that was about 2016 or 17 maybe and so we were kind of just like it was one of those things where it was just like yeah put a phone up and record it the live show and it was so like rudimentary and and just basic and then things got a little better and you could do a little more and then hey we could actually have a live mix and stuff like that and then the pandemic was sort of oh, this is like the thing we kind of were already doing. So we were a little ahead of the curve with that. It wasn't like a big thing to sort of start. Um, I think a lot of times those kind of things are just right place, right time. And we're a band that's kind of had right place, right time happen a couple times. And it's just sort of knowing like, oh, this is something interesting. Maybe we should kind of push it. Um, and of course, during the uh, pandemic and the touring going out the window, Streaming was kind of a nice like outlet, I guess, especially with like staying in touch with like the more diehard fans that would want to tune in and watch and maybe see something a little bit different. And then, of course, we were able to do some of the more high quality streams as well, the paid streams. Um, it was it was a crazy time. Uh, I would say it was fun to do this stuff. It, the circumstances sucked, but it was fun to be able to kind of have to try to think outside of the box. Uh, I think there's a lot of times when you like, you get into your routine of like, you do a record, you tour, you do a record, you tour. That really broke the routine and we had to get creative as did everyone in the industry. Um, but it was good and it gave us a little time to reset and sort of come back to touring like at like 150%, I feel like. And was it embraced by everyone? In the band? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I think, um, we all kind of do it on our own terms in terms of like individual stuff. Like I kind of like pulled back from it quite a bit because we've been touring a lot and my time at home, I like to, you know, now having a daughter, I want to like make sure that I have like, you know, we had three weeks off between this tour, actually a little less, but about two and a half weeks off between this tour and South America. And it was Christmas and it was just like, okay, you know, I, I got to like, prioritize family time and basically the next like six months is kind of the same it's like mostly a little bit of time at home go back out on tour so it's one of those things I think people they, they see me on the live streams and stuff when we're playing live so I think uh, I think uh, everyone's getting their fix of me on the internet um, but you know maybe maybe in the summer when I have a little more time and I want to pop on and stuff. It's nice that it's there. And it'll probably be like one of those things of like when you do a tour for a while or you haven't recorded for a while, you appreciate it more with separation of time. It doesn't feel like, oh man, like I got to get on, I got to do this every single day. And uh, pandemic, I was doing a lot more, but now with the touring, this is the priority for me, like being out here doing this. Uh, yeah, home, it's for whatever, uh, it's the baby schedule, basically, you know, it's whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever she wants to do and kind of following that, which is, you know, it's nice to not have to make the decisions. You're just kind of, uh, you know, hey, she wants to play, it's time to play. Uh, but out here, we definitely have a schedule. Um, you know, early part of the day is pretty chill. If there's no catering or anything, like this morning that uh, Alex and I went to found a nice little breakfast spot around the corner. Nice to get out of the venue you know, go walk around if you got time. Uh, you know, the sound check is usually the same. The meet and greets are the same every day. And the biggest thing that we've added to our schedule is, as some people have seen online, is this, we're calling it the pig pen. Uh, basically, the whole pig thing came from Alex doing the pig squeals, like the death metal pig squeals. So, kind of an inside joke. But anyways, that became our little warm up uh thing got the idea from seeing megadeth do it on the metal tour of the year like okay 
we could pull that off. We could get all this gear and make it happen. And it's maybe one of the best things we've ever done. It's like three, four songs, warm up, play together as a band, walk on stage. You just, it's, it's the best feeling. It's like before you were maybe warm up a little bit on your own, go up on stage. That was pretty good, but it's like, this is like warming up before the marathon, you know? Because before it felt like, yeah, you're just basically doing a couple little stretches and running 20 miles. So now it's like, you feel good going up there. I don't feel like, first song, you're just so confident and comfortable. It's not less sort of, oh man, like, I forgot this part, or this, what are we doing here? It's, we work out the stuff and we go up on stage and do it. Especially when you're in freezing places like Glasgow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's very important, you know, staying warm, staying limber. Uh, Yoga, that's a big one for me now on tour. I, I, uh, I'm i doing this sort of like 45, well, it's a 90 day thing, but obviously this tour is like 45 days. So the goal is 45 days straight of yoga, um, keeping, keeping limber, you know, maybe getting in some workouts on the days off. But I guess over time, you just sort of learn to kind of like pace yourself, what works for you, what you prioritize and stuff. And of course, you know, going out on the, days off, having a couple of drinks, having a good meal with the crew, or even just the band sometimes, or friends that are in uh, in town. That that keeps things good and makes 45 days go by and keeps you sane. You know, we've been very lucky to have those. Um, like the Metal Tour of the Year, I mean, this is probably the most recent example where it was like, remember at the beginning of the tour, I was like, you know, I bet no one's ever invited Dave to stay out to like a dinner to like, take him out to dinner, pay for it, you know, because, I don't know, people probably want something from him or expect, you know, he's Dave staying, like, just take me out to dinner or something like that. I'm like, no, like, what if we, you know, we're on this tour and this is a massive tour for us and it's the first one back after the pandemic. Kind of a thank you uh, to him, you know, for the tour, but also, I don't know, imagine getting to take out one of your heroes that, like, inspired you to start playing and you know led you to this moment you know you would uh i think most people would want to do something like that and we did we took them to the one of the sickest steakhouses i've ever been to in minneapolis uh it was it was amazing and just like glad we could like get some pictures of it because <laughs> it was like one of those things i'm like man uh it was one once in a lifetime type thing i'm sure we'll do more shows with megadeth and stuff but you know he graciously came out. I, we couldn't believe he accepted the offer and it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's very nice. Uh, he knows what he wants. He's, uh, he's like, it was very cool to see him day to day, kind of the level of attention he gives to like his show, the Megadeth show. Um, it's not just get up and rehearse uh, a couple songs. It's like, you know, he'll, watch, he'll go out front while the other dudes are playing to watch the light show to give any sort of uh, feedback and stuff and um, you know he knows exactly what Megadeth should look like and sound like and it's a flawless show and so for us we're like man like you know that's that's the, the pinnacle you know and it takes a lot of work and it takes caring and so yeah it was good for us to be able to go out and, go out and take him out and talk to him a bit you know a little bit outside of the venue and beyond just the like brief, hey, how you doing kind of thing. It was, that was really fun and uh, we enjoyed it very much. And, you know, we're all make, massive Megadeth fans. So it was an honor for us to be able to do that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, of course we kind of got into some shop talk, uh, but that was cool too, because it's like, we're kind of asking things that maybe other people wouldn't ask him just because we're, you know, we're both like in bands and not, you know, we're talking about Hey, like when you guys do your playbacks, uh, your flick tracks and all these like little kind of in the weed type things that um, maybe makes wouldn't be something that other people would be interested in, but we're interested in or like when you rehearse or when you pick songs, like how do you how do you guys go about it and just learning different things like he even said um, something along the lines of basically like, you know, well, both our bands, we always play the click tracks, but something they do is they'll kind of speed and slow down songs depending on the tour, depending on like maybe what song it's following or how it's feeling live. And I was like, wow, I mean, that's like a whole, that's like a whole different level of getting in there and really like fine tuning things. But 
I think if you want to sound like that level of good, you gotta you gotta go there. You know, it's 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 almost kind of like uh, you can get I'm almost go mad with all those little things. But I, it was cool to hear him talk about that stuff because like then you really start to appreciate. Like, it looks effortless how good it is live, and I'm like, well, that's why, because this stuff you don't know about is happening behind the scenes. Uh, Devin Townsend was one for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. He's definitely another one of those guys. He's, uh, you know, it's it's about being, like, a stickler for the uh, the little things, you know, and probably makes you go crazy a little bit sometimes, but it is good. I, I do feel like we're, we're good because we're all pretty detail-oriented with that stuff, so... We're all, we all care enough to like go in and like really try these different things. And I mean, every day on this tour, we're, we're changing the setup quite a bit, show to show. So keeps us on our toes and we have to adjust things based upon that. And, uh, but it's fun though. It makes the shows and the days fly by.